I feel as though I've been chasing a Payday 3 my entire adult life. But it's easy to forget that Payday 2 was originally only meant to be supported until late 2014. Development was first extended until 2017, then 2018, and finally as of October 2019, it was extended indefinitely in order to hopefully fund the holy grail of Payday 3. That in mind, the possibility of a new Payday title has been circulating since 2015, before being officially announced as in development in February 2017. Of course, then CEO Bo Anderson was also quoted saying, you simply don't rush Payday 3. But little did we know, that meant a minimum of six more years of waiting, after the future of Payday 3 was thrown into jeopardy following the failure of Overkill's The Walking Dead. As of the last couple of years, Starbreeze has completely restructured their business, and with new leadership at the helm, are refocusing the company towards one specific goal, the release of Payday 3. Doubling down on the Payday franchise has seemingly been a successful strategy, allowing Starbreeze to once again go out on a limb and announce a planned release date of 2013. And yet, why have we seen so little about the game itself? Is it even possible for a game of Payday 3's scope and importance to be launching within the next 12 months when all we've seen so far are bits of concept art? Shall we be preparing ourselves for delays or worrying about an unfinished release that could possibly kill the series? In my opinion, the answer is none of the above. Whilst I believe a delay is still entirely possible, I'm actually unsurprised when I look at the timeline of events so far. It's been entirely in line with Starbreeze's previous marketing strategy and approach to new releases. 2023 is still absolutely on the cards, and I'm going to tell you why. The inspiration for this video came from a poll I shared on the channel a few weeks ago. The results and comments really helped me grasp what community sentiment is towards Payday 3 at the moment. Basically, there are two prevailing theories. One, that Payday 3 will launch in Q3 of 2023, emulating Payday 2's August release date somewhere close to that 10-year anniversary, believed to be the case by 33% of you. Or two, in light of the lack of a more defined release date and a showcase of gameplay footage, the game will be delayed until 2024 at the earliest. A whopping 44% of you subscribe to this one. Based on how other highly anticipated AAA and AA titles marketing development cycles usually play out, I can see where the scepticism comes from. Elden Ring first entered development in 2017, we saw its first cinematic teaser trailer at E3 2019, hyping up the game years in advance of its launch. Things went quiet until the release of the first gameplay trailer in 2021, before the network test in November. The actual launch of the game was delayed, but only by a month from January to February 2022. This strikes me as a very orthodox reveal-to-release cycle. The first teaser content was released two years after entering development, and two and a half years from release, with gameplay only being showcased between six to nine months from launch to ensure it was representative of the finished project. This in mind, I completely understand the pessimism around Payday 3, as it seems years behind schedule without the release of even a teaser cinematic. Hell, I've even been quoted saying that I anticipated a delay in the past, but as time's gone by, I've started to be convinced that 2023 probably still holds the release date. To understand why this is, we need to take a look to the past to understand how previous games have been handled by the studio. Penny the Heist was released by a completely different luck overkill, so I'm not sure it helps that much as a case study. But Payday 2 does provide an excellent platform to understand how the company approaches the release of a new game. Unlike Elden Ring, Payday 2's first teaser trailer released on the 13th of March 2013, just five months before the game itself would launch. Between then and August, Overkill started to share gameplay footage with publications, released a gameplay trailer on the 30th of May, and showcased heists at popular game shows. In fact, the closed beta launched on July 24th, just weeks before launch. Taking a look at just how condensed this marketing cycle was, I don't think it's a coincidence. Starbreeze intentionally aims to release a tight flow of information around the launch of a new game, with grassroots marketing being their bread and butter. Of course, Payday 2 also had the web series, but that was ongoing at the time of launch, furthering my theory regarding Starbreeze's policy to marketing. Instead of aiming to build hype over years leading up to a crescendo at launch, preceded by a massive player base fall off in the weeks following, Starbreeze looked to guarantee a short and continuous hype cycle which continues to grow after launch, aligning really well with their games as a service model. Just look at Steam charts. Payday 2 launched with an impressive 57,000 concurrent players, but that figure has been regularly bested over the game's life cycle, peaking at over 63,000 one year on in June. Even now, over nine years later, we consistently see higher average annual users than we did back in 2013. 
Starbreeze markets towards longevity, which is why I'm not surprised we've seen so little of Payday 3. Its launch is not meant to be the big event, it's intended to be the start of the event which lasts as long as the game is still in active development. If I were to guess, I'd say even the screenshots we received back in 2021 were released under duress, partially due to commitments to their new publisher at the time, and also the obvious pressure of hosting a 10 year payday anniversary event and potentially not addressing the elephant in the room. Also, whilst I'm not a huge fan of bringing Overkill's The Walking Dead into the discussion, as it had such a strange development cycle, despite suffering numerous delays, it was also still released within a year of its first cinematic teaser trailer, with gameplay revealed under 6 months from release at E3 2018, and a closed beta under a month from the November launch date. To put it simply, Starbreeze don't market like other companies in the industry, so not getting anything tangible at this stage really shouldn't come as a shock. This of course begs the question, when do I think the game will launch, and when will we finally get more than a few static screenshots to be excited about? Well, as I personally do subscribe to a Q3 or Q4 release in 2023, I'm not expecting to see anything until spring of next year. The Game Awards in December offers another good opportunity for Starbreeze to put a marker in the sand, but it would be uncharacteristic for them to take it in my opinion. Now, so far I must admit I'm making educated guesses based on prior trends, which isn't really enough to go by, especially with Payday 3's importance to Starbreeze as a company. They simply have to get it right, and might still change their tactics to ensure a more profitable launch. For reference, even Starbreeze's auditor, PWC, mentions the perils of Payday 3 being unsuccessful in the risks and uncertainties section of their report. This is why I also want to bring in other evidence of how they've been operating with regards to release discussions recently. In my opinion, if a company knows there's a degree of doubt when it comes to the launch of a game, they tend to stay as quiet about it as possible, trying not to raise false hope and frustrate their community further. Yet any time the Payday Twitter account mentions the game, they constantly double down on 2023, as does Almir whenever asked for news about the game on stream. The easy option would be to ignore these questions as companies are well within their rights to do so with inquiries about an unreleased title. Yet, they continue to give confirmation. Equally, within their quarterly reports to investors, that date is constantly highlighted and appears to be the linchpin of their strategy moving forwards. If they are to achieve their goal of publishing and operating several games on the market by 2025, Payday 3 needs to be a base to build off by 2023 at the latest. Of course, we have to take this information with a pinch of salt, as I doubt Starbreeze would be shouting from the rooftops to their investors about likely delays, but I do find them to be consistently transparent about their business strategy, and so much of that is reliant on Payday 3 releasing on time. Another argument I often see against the game releasing as planned is that it simply hasn't been in development for long enough, and as the flag bearer of the entire company, Starbreeze will be forced to delay to avoid a botched launch. My first argument against this would be to point out that Payday 3 has been in development since 2017. From a concept and design perspective, I'm positive that some of the work prior to the restructuring will have been used in the current build that's being worked on, even if the Valhalla engine had to be scrapped. After making the switch to Unreal, it isn't hard to imagine that a two and a half year production cycle would be enough to carry forward those concepts into a polished game. If you're somehow hoping for Payday 3 to be as big as Payday 2 on launch, then I understand your doubts. But let's face it, it will release with only a fraction of the second game's current content, meaning 2023 is entirely reasonable from a workload standpoint in my opinion. And although this is rampant speculation on my part, as many businesses do run at a loss, there's only so long Starbreeze can afford to not be profitable. Admittedly, they're moving in the right direction with the profit and loss situation, but 2016 is a long time ago now, and the directors will be desperate to see a return to profitability sooner rather than later. Not to mention, as Cock Media, now Plyon, is publishing the game, there may be some contractual obligations tying them down to 2023 irrespective of its completeness, as Troy mentioned in his video earlier this week. Although, as the most high profile Prime Matter game in their portfolio, I doubt this is something we need to worry about. Outside of simply applying logic to this situation, I've also tried to leverage my background in finance and economics to read into Starbreeze's quarterly reports and better predict when we might see the game. With the Q3 2022 report just releasing, I now have access to the most up to date figures. One of the more interesting indicators to me has to be sales and marketing costs. Since these figures have been accessible in 2018, there's obviously been a massive drop off in expenditure in line with the lack of active releases and huge spending cuts following Overkill's The Walking Dead's failure. 
But if we zoom in from January to September between 2019 and 2022, we can more clearly see the ramp up in marketing expenses, finally exceeding that $1 million threshold for the nine month period in the most recent report. This 10.9 million SEK spent on sales and marketing so far this year is no small sum, but it certainly isn't close to the budget you'd anticipate for a game of Payday 3 stature. Bearing in mind the 50 million euro publishing deal, I'd anticipate at least half that value again would be spent on marketing Payday 3. So, this suggests to me that any advanced stage marketing for the game still hasn't started, and this increase is more in line with Starbreeze bolstering their marketing team before a larger push over the next few quarters. Talking of that team, I think employee headcount also speaks to how far through the development process we are. We're told Starbreeze expects its headcount to peak in the coming months, which will be in line with when development is at its busiest and most crucial, roughly 12 months from release. If we compare it to the 639 staff members from back in 2018, it looks like nothing. But with the new pure payday focus of the team, there have been moves in the right direction over the past three years, currently peaking at 159 employees as of Q3 2022. My impression is that most key roles are already filled and Starbreeze are all hands on deck toward their planned 2023 release. Accounting for all these factors, if I was a gambling man, I'd put money on Payday 3 being out and in our hands by this time next year. The cynic in me said that delays were inevitable, but when I look at the actual evidence, late 2023 seems the most likely option. Some might fear this is a bad thing when it comes to the polish and completeness of the game, and I can't really speak to that concern until we see more of it. But I would like to remind everyone that Payday 2 released with only 12 heists itself, yet was still an incredibly fun and addicting experience, even in the early days. But here's where I want you guys to have your say. Payday 3 is coming one way or another, but will it see further delays, and am I being naive in suggesting that planned 2023 release is most likely? Let me know when you anticipate the game to finally be showcased, and when you think it'll actually be playable. As a final piece of evidence, it seems to me that the Texas Heat campaign is being slightly condensed, with the fourth heist likely being released in May or June of 2023. Could this be in line with the timing of the sequel just a few months later? Who knows? But for now, I'll leave you to discuss this highly contentious topic in the comments below. I'm off to enjoy more Payday 2 content in the meantime. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.